Greetings, 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 and welcome to my journey with Paula G, where we juggle this journey called life while we're walking in the gifts and the talents that God has given us. Thank you all so much for joining us here on the journey. If this is your first time, welcome. I am so happy that you're with us. I'm so glad that you tuned in. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. I hope things have been going well for each and every one of you. You all that have been with me on the journey, you know I always start the show with time is precious. It is so precious. It's the one thing that we can't get back. So for you to think it not robbery to spend this these moments with us is truly, truly appreciated. We are actually juggling this journey called life while we're walking the gifts and talents that God has given us. In this particular moment in time, I'm coming to you remotely from South Carolina, and I want to take a moment to thank Sergeant Major and Mrs. Harry Ferguson, no relation, Sergeant Major and Mrs. Harry Ferguson for, for providing accommodations for us to uh, tape this particular episode. And the reason I'm coming to you remotely is because I'm here out of town supporting one of our own, a Positive Power 21 family member who has uh, currently recently lost a family member. So I'm here supporting um, in their time of bereavement. And it is yet another reminder of something else I always share with you all, life is precious. Life is precious, y'all. Every day that you wake up is an opportunity for you to use the gifts and talents that God has given you. Miles Monroe, you've heard it. Miles Monroe said the richest place on the planet is the cemetery because so many of us go to our graves having not used the gifts and talents that God has given us. And at this particular season, and this particular person went to his grave an empty vessel because he used all the gifts, the talents that God has given him. So I wanna encourage each and every one of you who may think that you don't have a gift or you think that you don't have a talent, you think that you don't have something to offer, you do, you do. And the very fact that you wake up every morning is an opportunity for you to develop that gift, develop that talent and grow that talent. So I hope that encourages uh, someone, but I just thank my underwriters. Again, I thank Sergeant Major and Mrs. Harry Ferguson for providing a uh, space for us to record this show during this season, because we, you know, even in times of bereavement and so forth and, and other things that we have going on in our lives, you know, the show must go on as they say. <laughs> The show must go on. So we thank you all um, so much for that. Let me see. Is there any other notes I have I wanted to share with you? All? Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. We are, it is time for, I guess I'm excited to have this young lady with us. She's an international influencer. She's an international speaker. She's a gospel lyricist. She's a woman of God and she is on her journey and she has a testimony to share with us. She is eternal. Welcome, my sister. You're looking fabulous today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You as well. How is it out where you are, the weather and everything? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, we're we're in this rainy tornado hurricane season. It seems oh, like we've wow. been in it all summer, all fall, but you know, God is good. We're we, you know, we're all doing well and 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 healthy. So we we can't complain. <laughs> that is so good to hear. I wanted to uh, send my deepest condolences to the family and friends uh, of those that uh, had lost their lives, um, but they are going to be living through mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. whatever God allowed them to inspire others and impact others. So we thank Absolutely. God for their life. Yes. Yes. And we know that they are, they are, they are living in glory and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just enjoying an eternal life with our Lord and Savior. So yes, we, it does give us comfort, give us comfort. Yes. So as we we talk about juggling this journey called life, we're walking in the gifts and talents that God has given us. You are in the midst of juggling this journey with a challenge that you have while walking in your gifts and talents. So to share with us, you know, what you're currently um navigating, shall we say, in regard to um, some challenges that you're doing? Yes. Uh, well, um, first of all, uh, just thanks again for the platform uh, to share with you and fellowship with you. Um, I recently um, had a, a, a scare, <laughs> I would say, because when your air get cut off, you, you know, that's not something we're used to Feel it, gets it your attention. you know, and so I was at a baseball game 
and my airway was being shut off. I didn't know that at the time. I had been um, dealing with a goiter, which is like what they call is a normal overgrowth of thyroid tissue. Mm -hmm. And after doing research, find out thyroid issues run on both sides of the family, which I didn't know before. I knew one or two, but then I found out a lot of more family members had dealt with, you know, different issues with the thyroid. And I went to the hospital. And when I went, they told me I had about 25 to 50% of my airway and depending on which way I was laying. So the doctor didn't know how I was sitting there comfortably or how I could even, you know, walk comfortably. We had set to do the surgery, um, but it was gonna be months out because they wouldn't do the surgery unless it was issues. Um, and so this thing was about this big. And if I would, to show you a picture, you couldn't be driving, okay? Because you'd be like, oh, it was wrapped around um, my thyroid and that was uh, pressing my windpipe, which was also pressing my esophagus. So I could have just not woke up one day when um, my um, uh, windpipe, it would have collapsed. They said, you know, it could collapse at any time with, you know, pressure like that. Um, but God will, I went to the emergency room and talked to a doctor that was really helpful. He, he gave me the option to deal with the specialist um, because that person was an expert. And I had literally prayed and asked God to send me to uh, a thyroid uh, surgeon that was good. And when I talked to my endocrinologist, which is a thyroid doctor, you know, she said, well, I can meet you, you know, next month or so. And I said, no, I have to see you now. And she said, well, I'm in Temecula. So it's about 20, 30 minutes ride. I said, I'm coming. Okay. I'm not waiting till next month. And I told her when I left out that room, when she couldn't find my, um, my windpipe on an ultrasound, they couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. And she said, the same thing. She was shocked on how I could sit up comfortably, how I was sleeping. She just couldn't comprehend that part. She said, but you definitely need to get it removed. She said, you definitely need to get it removed. And I said, we walked out the room where she had did her examination. And I said, everything just went in slow motion. And I said, I need the best thyroid surgeon, you know, and she just turned around and it was just like, like a movie. And she said, I know the best thyroid surgeon in San Diego. And if he accepts your insurance, I'm going to refer you to him. And so she had her assistant at the front while I'm wa walking to the front to, you know, check out and find out. And she said he accepts it. And Dr. Beauvais is his name. He's been doing thyroid surgery for over, I think, 22 years. And he specializes in all kinds of surgery though. He's an amazing doctor, um, but he performs over 90% more thyroid surgeries, they say, than other uh, surgeons. And when he came in, I just felt the spirit of God. He was just so uh, welcoming, you know, understanding. He listened and he said, I'm gonna take care of you. That was the first thing when he walked in and he said, I'm gonna take care of you. And I said, I knew that was nothing but God when I met up with him. And after the surgery, he told my son, he says, it was a perfect surgery. He said it was perfect, you know? And they had to cut me, they cut me, he had to cut me from here Mm -hmm. to the other side, all the way across. And I'll tell you, you could barely see anything because I'm using cocoa butter, but he went from here because it was that big. He said it was bigger than what he thought, but it went by so fast, I, maybe an hour and a half in there and he was finished. And, you know, I, I did have some things that happened that I was just, um, you know, it was, it was frightening because, you know, my windpipe was bent, you know? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I was asking them, how are you guys going to get in there? And they said, well, we're going to be honest as anesthesiologists team. There were some young, uh, vibrant young women. And they said, uh, we got some, we got a special camera. I said, well, are you going to use a smaller tube? <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. and they <laughs> said, well, we got a smaller camera and this is going to, as soon as you fall asleep, we're going to put it down there and we're going to take care of you. Same thing that the doctor said. And I said, okay, God, I said, well, you got me. I'm with you. So whatever happened, 
you know, and I woke up and I was fine. And, you know, people said your throat was going to hurt this and that. And I didn't feel anything in my throat. Okay. Now my throat was jammed up and I didn't feel no soreness or anything afterwards. You know, um, I took the medication uh, that they told me to pain medication. And then that happened and I felt great. And then about two weeks, about three weeks ago, my heart started acting up. And so I started uh, pretty much about to pass out. I was overdosing on the thyroid medication they had gave me. And so I went to the emergency room about four times. And then they finally lowered my dose. They told me to stop it. And so we're on a new dosage now. And I went to two, uh, two appointments this week, Monday and Wednesday, because they want to check my heart to make sure that it's just the medication and, and it didn't affect my heart. So um, it has been, um, it is a, 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 a journey because they, if they don't find the right dosage, I'll just be up and down. Um, I'm in a group, uh, with a lot of other uh, men and women that have had thyroid surgery and thyroid removal, which is very great. And this is just saying to say that no matter what it looks like when it comes to our health, a lot of us don't want to go to the doctor, Mm -hmm. but it is truly better to find out what it is because it could literally be something this small that could change your life and allow you to still be here with your family. You know, um, that doctor actually specializes in cancer removal. And so he, besides thyroid uh, surgery, and he was just saying that uh, a lot of times if people catch it in time, we can do something about it. You know, he said, we're not God, but we want to do the best that we can for patients and help them. So I would encourage anyone that has been ignoring anything because I had that thing on my um, throat. It came when I got um, pregnant with my youngest son. So Mm -hmm. eight years, and they said it takes up to eight years sometimes for you to notice it in your blood, to even notice that the tests will keep coming back telling you nothing's wrong with your thyroid. And so I've had this weight up and down fluctuation. That's hypothyroidism, you know, Hashimoto's disease. And then some have hyperthyroidism where it keeps their weight down, you know. And so all about the hormones and that controls literally our balance. A lot of people don't know, but the thyroid is very important. If it's attached to your body and it's not functioning right, it will cause havoc, meaning your brain your equilibrium will be off. I mean, it, it really had me with the medication they gave me. I mean, I felt like the whole room was spinning and, you know, that quick life could change. And I felt like something was just cutting me off, you know, and I grabbed my son and I grabbed my daughter. I just started praying. I said, something is, uh, uh, something is happening, you know, and I felt like something was trying to take me from the world. So I just thank God that I went, I wasn't like, okay, I'm gonna fight it out. You know, because my son, when I came home the first time from baseball game, he said, hey, you know, he's used to me being strong. Mm -hmm. But sometimes us that are strong, we go through things. That is so true. And we, and the people are so used to shaking things off. But Mm -hmm. I would encourage anyone because whatever your calling is in life and whatever your purpose is, uh, we can't do it without our health, you know. So health is wealth, not saying financially, but Mm -hmm. to be able to do the things that we supposed to do on, with this time on right. earth. So go right. get checked, be encouraged to go get checked and pray about it before you even go. Ask God to bless you with the doctor. Ask God to bless you with the nurses. If you're worried about these doctors and these nurses, there are great doctors and nurses out there. Uh, pray for them before it's even time. You know, ask God to prepare you to go. If you're dealing with anxiety because of it, ask God to deal with the anxiety as well. Um, but go get checked and, I, and you deserve you deserve to be cared for. You deserve a second chance. If you're dealing with something with your body, allow God to use these doctors. They, they blessed them in their minds and, and understanding and gave them wisdom and allow them to help care for you and help you be here as long as possible with your family. So you can do what it is that God has placed you here to do. And and you make such a wonderful point because, you know, there's so many of us that 
you know, we, we, you know, have this mindset of, I don't need to go to the doctors. God is going to heal me. I'm going to pray my way through. And in some instances, that certainly is the case. But to your point, you know, there comes a time where you, you got to step forward. You got to go to the doctor and, and, and to your point, eternal, pray to be led to the right doctor, pray to be led to the right nurses, pray to be led to those who can, who are trained to help you through these situations and heal you because God yes. is working through those individuals. He, God he is working, definitely is. Yes, he's working he through really, really is. And, and nurses. And you certainly are a testimony. And I think you probably just, someone who's listening to this, that's going through the same thing, you, you probably gave them, not probably, you gave them, you just gave them some peace of mind that you've you know, been there I, and that you have, you, you've shared that. So you, you've been through this incredible journey and you're continuing to navigate this journey as well. And your, your life journey, our time always goes so quickly. We've got a few minutes, you know, your life journey as, as your um, bio has stated from a uh, fast life to deliverance. Yes. And from that point, God bringing you through yes. this uh, recent health challenge that, that, that you're still kind of navigating as well. Share with us a bit of what you feel your mission is. I believe my mission is to help build the kingdom of God, to spread the gospel to as many uh, men, women, children um, that that's possible. Whatever that number is that God has for me, I want to do it. I said, I said, Lord, as many souls that I directed away from you, I want to bring back a hundredfold. You know, I just want to do and live my purpose. And so that's that's where I'm at. Um, and I'm, I, that's what I want to want to share, you know, and that's what the messenger actually is about is bringing back the love to the village, bringing back the love of God. And when 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 people were unashamed to share about God and when the neighbor would watch over your children and and and, and we work more as a unit, you know. And so that's what that's that's what I believe I'm supposed to be doing, you know, spreading the good news, you know, mm-hmm. God is love. So and and love kills everything, you know. Mm-hmm. When people want to be mad, you you know, you give them a bunch of love. They just they don't know <laughs> they don't know how to. They like ah, oh, that's not what I wanted them to say. Well, yeah, they, you know. So love is powerful, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what that's what I believe my mission. That's what I want to do. That that fulfill my purpose. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Share with the audience how they can stay connected with you. Definitely. You can stay connected with me on all social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, all over social media. And it's I'm eternal. I M E T U R N U L E T U R N U L. And you can also Google me as well as you can get the music as well. The ministry on all digital platforms. The website to connect is www.we805south.com. We805south.com. Right, where you can find everything eternal. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just been blessed with a powerful testimony. Whatever it is that you may have been, are going through, or will be going through, our guest today has shared with you her testimony and how she has come through and still coming through, but how her faith has led her through, how prayer has led her through so that she can do what it is that God has gifted her to do for this season in time. So I know you were blessed. We thank her so much for joining us here on the journey. Thank you. We thank our underwriters for you all. This would not be possible. We thank you so much. Our viewers, our listeners, we're on, we're on a variety of platforms now, so we're just eternally grateful for that. So we thank you all so very much. And until next time, the greatest conversation that you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? Is God a part of that conversation? And are you listening to his still small voice? Until next time, embrace the journey. 
Don't ever and ever be worried of the things you can't control. If you see it coming, let it come. The fight is not yours. All you got to do is to build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of His mighty power. You've been feeling broken down The trouble's coming down and down It's been coming, knocking you down, 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 down I want to tell you there's a God for you He's coming to raise you up and down The problems, the troubles will all be solved right now I know you've been passing through The trials the forest that hard for you Through the valley of death, through sound I feel. 